I'm Amy from Peekaboo Pattern Shop and today I'm going to show you how to sew a denim jacket. This pattern comes with two views, has a classic denim jacket with the woven sleeves and just a collar or there's the view B which I've sewn here and that has the sweatshirt sleeves with the attached hood. I'm going to show you how to sew both options in this pattern. This pattern has all the features you'd expect of a denim jacket. We've got the pieced front, optional welt pockets here, the chest pockets, you can do a faux pocket here, or you can do the functional pocket. This is the back view of the jacket. We've got the option to add these little button tabs. I'll show you the inside of the jacket. I'll also show you how to attach these denim buttons. It gives a really nice professional finish. Here's the inside of our jacket. This is the back of the chest pocket. And then if you include the welt pockets, you also end up with a little bonus pocket on the inside. Let's go ahead and get started. We're gonna start assembly off with the back of the jacket. So I've laid out all my pieces so I can see what I need to sew together. We're gonna start by sewing the side panels to the middle back piece. So I'm gonna line up the triangle notches. And then after I have sewn these together, I'm gonna to top stitch the seam allowance to the back middle piece. For the top stitching on this project, I used a denim top stitching thread. It's a little bit thicker than regular thread and stands out more. And then I use a slightly longer stitch length for top stitching. So I set mine to three instead of the usual two and a half. So I've got the bottom of the back sewn together. Now we're gonna sew on the upper back piece. Pin these together. And if you find that your um, lower back is a little bigger than the upper back, you might not have used the full half inch seam allowance on the lower portion. I might need to go back and fix that. All right, so I'm going to go sew these together and then I'm going to top stitch along the bottom edge of the upper back piece. The back piece is finished. If you want to add any fun like patches or embroidery, you can do that now to the back of the jacket. Then we're going to move on to the front. The front has a lot of pieces, so I find it helpful to lay everything out before I get started, just to make sure I don't have anything mixed up and there's lots of notches to help you. So the first thing we're gonna do is sew the middle panels to the side. So you'll match up the triangle notches and we'll do this on both sides of the jacket. And then after you have that sewn on, we're gonna attach the center panel also to the middle panel. So if you want, you can go ahead and just pin everything now and sew together, them together all at once. Before we attach the upper front piece, we're gonna go ahead and add the pockets to the front of the jacket. This is optional, so you can skip it if you want. The chest pockets have two options. You can do a faux pocket or a functional pocket. If you're doing the faux pocket, You'll just take your pocket tracing guide and center it over the middle front piece. And then you're just gonna stitch right around the edge and afterwards add the pocket flap. And that will give the look of the pocket without the work. I'm gonna go ahead and do the functional pockets on this jacket. So I've finished the edges of my pocket facing and I sewed along the marked stitching line. Now I'm just gonna trim away the excess fabric and this is gonna create our opening for the pocket. I'm just gonna trim, I leave about a quarter inch here. I'm cutting through both layers of fabric. And then you're gonna snip in towards the corners here. I do have a bit of my seam allowance in here, so it's a little thick to snip through. Just be careful with your cutting. You need to snip one layer at a time to get through it, especially if you have thick denim. So I've snipped in towards the corners. You want to snip as close as you can without 
cutting through that stitching. And then I'm gonna bring this around to the inside of our jacket. Just pull it through. So after you pull it through to the inside of your jacket, I'm gonna press this flat and then I'm gonna to top stitch it. So I'm gonna go give this a good press with my iron. That's what it looks like from the inside and from the outside. After top stitching the pocket facing in place, we're ready to add the backing. So I've already prepped my pocket backing piece. I prepped, prepped this by pressing the edges over 3 eighths of an inch towards the right side of the fabric. I know my fabric looks pretty similar on both sides, but this is the wrong side. This is the right side. So that seems kind of backwards from what you'd normally do, but you're gonna press towards the right side of the fabric, and then we're gonna lay this right on top. So right side facing down and line it up with the edges of your pocket facing. And I found the easiest way to get this to stay in place. You can use like wash away wonder tape or I just use a kid's washable glue stick. So just put a little glue on the edges here. I'm gonna make sure I've got it straight. So once you have that secured, you're gonna flip it over to the other side because we want our top stitching thread to sew on that side. So make sure you've got it pressed down good. And then just to make sure it doesn't move, I like to put a couple pins through here. This won't be in the way of my top stitching, but just help hold that pocket pocket backing in place. So then to do your top stitching, you can grab your top stitching guide, and just lay it on top of here and trace around the edges and that'll give you a line of where to sew so you're not trying to just feel to where it is on the back side. Just make sure you have it centered over the pocket backing. Like I can feel the edge of my pocket backing right here. You wanna make sure that you'll be sewing the pocket in place. So you're just going to top stitch that down. So here's what it looks like from the right side and then from the back. And then we're gonna add the pocket flaps. So I already went ahead and sewed this together because it's pretty simple. You just sew them together with right sides together, trim seam allowances at the corner, turn it right side out and top stitch, and then you're gonna add a buttonhole. I do recommend if you're using top stitching thread for the buttonhole, uh, practice on some scraps first. Decide which buttonhole settings you want to use on your machine to make sure it works well. So after you have your flaps ready, you're just gonna baste the top edge to the top of your lower front pieces. And if you're doing the faux chest pockets, it's gonna look almost exactly the same as this because you'll have your top stitching right here that you already did. So you'll base that in place using half inch seam allowance. I'm gonna wait to add the button right here until the end so that it's not in my way while I'm sewing. Now that we're finished up with the chest pockets, we move on to the welt pockets. This is another optional step. So I've got these laid out on my two front pieces. You should have the curved edge closest to the side seam and it should be one inch inside the side seam on both sides of the jacket. And before you pin these in place, there's one step that you need to do first, which is there's a marked pressing line on the pattern piece. I'm just gonna get that pre-pressed. Uh, that is gonna form the well edge uh, that'll show on the other side of the jacket. And if you just press it now, it's a lot easier. So you'll press that and then we're gonna Line it up, make sure you've got the right piece on the right side. 
Let's pin that in place and then you're gonna sew around the welt pocket opening. So I have that marked here. It's a little hard to see my marking pencil, but that's marked. I went ahead and sewed it on this side. Let's see, here's my opening. And I had the, the pocket lining is right side facing down. I think I forgot to mention that. So now I'm gonna go ahead and cut the opening through both layers of my fabric. So you can use a rotary cutter to for the initial cut, or you can just use your scissors. Just make sure you do a little small snip so you don't accidentally go through any of your stitching. So I'm gonna go right down the center, making sure I'm cutting through both layers, and then snip in towards the corners. Cut as close as I can without going through the stitching. Take your time, make sure you don't cut through anything other than these two layers of fabric. So after you cut the pocket opening, we're gonna pull this pocket through to the wrong side of the fabric. So this is on the inside of the jacket now. Press this opening. We're not going to sew it in place yet. I just go press this opening so it's laying flat. Now that I've pressed the opening flat, this is what it looks like on the wrong side. Here it is on the right side. So now we're going to refold this pocket lining to make the little pleat. So we'd already folded along this line once. If it's come unpressed, you might need to just Repress it, here's my marked, my marked line. So you're wanting to bring the pressed edge so it just meets up with the pocket opening. So here's the pocket opening, and this just barely meets up with it. And then I'm gonna pin it in place. Let me show you what it looks like on the right side. So here's our welt. This is where the hand will go in. And flip it back over this way and then you're gonna fold sorry should be over on the right side and then we're gonna fold this down so take the upper part of your jacket fold it down and you're gonna see a little triangle here in your seam allowance and we're gonna sew across just the base of this triangle to the pocket lining piece so now I'm going to do the same thing with the bottom of the pocket opening. So you can flip that back up and then I'm going to fold up the bottom of the jacket. And I've got a little bit of seam allowance right here, that little triangle. And I'm just going to sew across the base of the triangle to this pleat in the welt pocket. The next step is to top stitch around the welt pocket opening. I'm not going to do the outside edge yet, the side closest to the side seam. So I've just gone along the top, the inside edge, and the bottom, and then we're going to add our pocket piece. So I'm going to flip this over. I've already done it on this side. I sewed around the curved corner edge, the one closest to the side seam, and the top edge. This side here is gonna end up covered by the placket on our jacket, so you don't need to finish that. So on this side, let's go ahead and right sides together. Add my pocket piece. And pin these edges together. If you have any part of it that doesn't line up like perfectly, you can go ahead and just trim them to match. So you'll just lift this out of the way, the rest of your jacket, as you sew around the edge so that you're only sewing through your two pocket pieces. Now that the pocket piece is sewn on, I'm going to top stitch along the outside edge of the welt pocket opening and I'm going to sew through all layers. So I'm going to catch this pocket in the seam and that'll keep it from like flapping around at all. 
And after I top stitch along the edge, then I'm gonna add a bar tack along the top and bottom of the pocket opening. I'm just gonna use a short, wide zigzag stitch to do that. To finish up the welt pockets, I'm gonna baste these center front edges together. And then I'm gonna baste the bottom edge of the pocket to the front piece. The front pockets are done, so we're ready to attach the upper front piece. Before I do that, I'm going to trim the seam allowance on this pocket flap down to a quarter inch so that this is a little easier for my serger to get through all these layers. If you did the, the faux chest pockets, you probably won't have any issues, but with the functional pockets, it is pretty thick right here, and I find it helps to trim this down a bit. I'm gonna trim that to a quarter inch. That way my serger is gonna have a lot less to try and trim through. And then pin this upper front piece in place. And after you sew that together, then you just top stitch the seam allowance to the bottom edge of the upper front piece. I've prepped the placket by pressing it over three eighths of an inch and then another inch and a quarter towards the wrong side of the jacket. If you included the welt pocket, it's gonna fall about halfway inside the placket. So don't sew this yet because we're gonna finish the top edge of the placket and then folding this back towards the right side an inch and a quarter. So just the opposite way that you had pressed it and pin that in place and then you'll have a marking on your pattern where we're going to sew and sew this little l shape seam and this is going to finish the top edge of the placket and just leave kind of this little tab that we're going to attach the collar to i've sewn along the marked line for my pattern piece i'm going to clip in towards the seam allowance just right to the corner here. Now we can turn this placket right side out. This is what it should look like. You're gonna have this little L shape right here. The top edge of the placket is finished. And then this is where the collar is gonna be attached after we get the back piece sewn on here. So this will tuck under like this. Once this is done, we can top stitch it in place. So press it flat and then I'm gonna sew from, I'm gonna sew this little tab along the edge here and then down the center front, and then in an inch and a quarter from the folded edge. So right along here, I'm gonna to top stitch that, and that will finish the front pocket. So make sure you have it pressed nice and flat, everything's tucked in where it belongs, and then you wanna carefully pin this pocket in place. You could use your wash away wonder tape or a washable glue stick, again, to really make sure that's in place before you top stitch. The plackets are top stitched on both sides, so now I'm ready to attach the back of the jacket to the front at the shoulder seams. 
pin these together. And then after I sew them together, I'm gonna top stitch the seam allowance to the back piece. That's an optional step, but I like to take the extra time to add the top stitching. The shoulder seams are sewn together and top stitched, so now we're ready to move on to the sleeves. I'm going to show you how to do the woven sleeve first. This pattern also has an option for knit sleeves. So on the woven sleeve, it's a two-piece sleeve. We've got our upper sleeve and our under sleeve. And the under sleeve has this little tab sticking out. We're going to fold this over twice and press it flat. And after you've press that the folded edge is going to be flush with the raw edge of the rest of the sleeve. So that's how that's going to look. I'm going to go top stitch this in place. So that's what it looks like from the front. So just press and fold over twice and then the folded edge should be flush with the edge of the sleeve. And then I'm going to just top stitch right along here. The placket on my undersleeve is top stitched and then I finished the seam allowance on both sides of the sleeve. So on this undersleeve where I have the finished edge, since I was using a serger, I just kind of curved off the edge right there. And I'm ready to go ahead and sew these together. So the right sides together, just gonna line these up. And then I'm gonna flip it over because I have I'm marking right here. I should have marked that on the wrong side of the sleeve, but that's where I'm going to stop sewing. So you want to stop sewing like just about half an inch past where you have your finished uh, placket on the under sleeve. I'm going to use a half inch seam allowance. So looking at it from this side, a half inch seam allowance is going to be past my placket on the under sleeve. After sewing the sleeve together, I'm going to flip it over. I'm going to press the seam allowance flat for now because that's going to make the next step a little easier. And on the upper sleeve, I'm going to fold, press and fold the seam allowance over a quarter inch and then another quarter inch, just like we did with the under sleeve. And then I'm going to top stitch that in place just along the placket opening. So from the right side, I'm just going to top stitch right along here. The placket opening on the upper sleeve is top stitch. This is what it looks like. So now I've pressed my seam allowance towards the upper sleeve. And if you flip this, you can see where there's like a weird little fold. If you want, you can just clip into the seam allowance right there to help it lay flat. Just like that. You can see where I've just made a little snip right above the top of my placket. Press the seam allowance over to the upper sleeve. And then I'm going to top stitch right down the upper sleeve meeting up with the top stitching on the upper placket. And then you can add a little bar tack here if you want at the top of the sleeve placket opening. The sleeve is all finished up. You'll do the exact same thing with the opposite sleeve. If you're doing the knit sleeves, uh, your sleeves will all be ready to go because they're just one piece. So we're ready to attach them to our jacket. I'm going to fold this out. And if you're doing the woven sleeve, the placket is going to go in the back. So like when we're finished, we're going to want this to go here. So you can find the center of the sleeve and pin it to the shoulder seam. And then you're going to match up the seam in the sleeve with the seam between your upper and lower back pieces. And you're gonna want that to line up on the half inch seam allowance. So right at the raw edge, it's not gonna match, but because of the curve of the pieces, so you can kind of pinch in at 
the like half inch seam allowance and see how that lines up. So I know I've got that in the right spot. If you wanna make sure you have it exact, I would like baste this first. You can even do it by hand if you want and check it and make sure it's how you want it before you sew it in place. So I'm gonna keep pinning my sleeves in place with woven sleeves. Sometimes you have to ease them in a bit. So I do the ends first, and the center and then the ends. Just kind of match these up. And then you'll do the same thing on the other side and then sew the sleeve in place. I'm actually gonna do knit sleeves on this jacket. This was just kind of a demo sleeve to show you guys how to do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and take that off. Show you the knit sleeves real quickly. So here's my sleeve already to go. I'm using this cozy brush French Terry. You wanna use something fairly thick just so that it's a similar weight to the rest of the jacket. So same thing as before, find the center of the sleeve, pin that to the shoulder, pin the ends in place, and then we'll ease the rest to fit, which is a lot easier to do with knits than wovens typically. And I don't use many pins because I've sewn a lot of sleeves, but you can use as many pins as you need to to feel comfortable with this. So after you've got your sleeves pinned in place, I'm gonna go ahead and sew these and then top stitch the seam allowance to the body of the jacket. After the sleeves are sewn on and top stitched, it's time to sew the side seams. I already have gone ahead and done that step. You'll sew up the sleeve and down the side seam of the jacket in one continuous seam. And now we're ready to move on to our collar. So the outer layer of the collar, this is the layer that's gonna show, I've pressed the bottom edge, which is the side with the notch, up half an inch, towards the wrong side of the collar, and then I've sewn the two collar pieces together. You'll leave this pressed edge that should stay pressed up while you're sewing the collar together. So after you've done that, trim your seam allowance at the corners and turn this right side out. And then we'll be ready to attach this to our neckline. So you wanna turn right side out and press it flat. And we're gonna to attach to the neckline. So I had already done this step once and then realized I'd made a mistake. So that's why my seam allowance has already been clipped. Yours will not be. So you're gonna line up your notches. So I'm only pinning one layer of the collar to the neckline. This layer with the folded up edge not going to include in this seam. And then on this side, you get to the end, you're going to pin this folded edge of the collar to this little tab on the front placket. Not going to catch the other layer of the collar, just one layer of the collar. Pin the rest of this together. So 
stamping on the other side, folded edge of the collar, line it up with a little tab on the front placket. Yep, so I'm ready to sew my collar to the neckline and then after you've sewn it, then you can clip your seam allowance, which I had already done due to a little error on my part. The collar's now sewn to the neckline. Go ahead and clip your neckline seam allowance. If you're just doing the collar option of this pattern, you press the seam allowance up. Make sure everything's tucked in here nicely and then top stitch around all edges of the collar. I'm including the hood, so I've got some more steps to do. I went ahead and sewed my hood together. It's pretty basic hood construction. So the two pieces together, right sides together, and then it has a three quarter inch hem. So I've gone ahead and done that. And now with wrong sides together, I'm gonna line up the seam in the hood, this notch on the back neckline. And then the end of the hood is going to be just a little bit before the end of the collar just to try and keep a tiny bit of bulk out of that seam, about a quarter inch. So once you've got this pinned in place, I'm gonna just baste the hood to the neckline. Make sure you don't catch the other side of your collar in this seam. So try and kind of fold that down out of the way. The hood is basted on with wrong sides together. So now we are ready to finish up this collar. Whole seam allowance will go up inside the collar you can either just carefully pin this in place or use your washable glue stick, wash away wonder tape. I'm just going to use pins and I'm going to top stitch from this side of the collar because that's the side that's going to end up showing since the collar folds down like this. So that makes this a little bit easier. Just pin all the way along here, and then I'm going to top stitch around the entire collar, and that will finish up the neckline of the jacket. The neckline is all finished up now. This is what it's gonna look like after you flip the hood up. It gives this fun, like layered look. So we're ready to move on to the bottom band of the jacket. 
I've already pressed my band piece. You're gonna fold it in half, wrong sides together, and press flat, and then press one long edge up half an inch. And then we're gonna pin this to the bottom of the jacket. So the unpressed edge, you need to leave half an inch on the end for your seam allowance. I'm just gonna pin all the way across. And if you have any trouble getting this to line up, I would find the center of the band and the center back of the jacket and get those pinned and then pin the ends and then work your way across. That might make it a little bit easier for you since it is such a long piece. Got this pinned in place. Got half an inch hanging off both ends. Ready to go sew this band on. After you sew the band on, you're gonna press it down and then I'm gonna fold it up so the opposite direction of how it was pressed. You line up the folded edge. So we've got this half inch seam allowance pressed down. Line up the folded edge with our seam from the bottom band. And then I'm just gonna sew straight down flush with my placket edge. Sew the bottom band and then I'll turn it right side out. I sewed both corners of the bottom band, trimmed the seam allowance at the corner. I'm ready to turn this right side out. Now looking at the inside of the jacket, I need to pin this in place. I'm going to top stitch it from the other side. So if you're using pins, you need to put them on the right side of the jacket. Or this is another chance to use your washable glue stick or wash away wonder tape. So I'm going to use the glue stick on this. So I'm just gluing along my seam allowance. And this will just come right out in the wash. So if you accidentally get some past the seam allowance, you don't need to worry about it. Okay, so I can start folding this up. Give it a little press to secure it. And if you are using the glue stick route, you'll want to let it dry for a minute before you try and sew it so that it'll hold. Okay, so I've made it to the end. I'll let that sit for a minute. And then I normally do at least a pin or two just here on the corners. I don't pin the whole way across, but I feel like it's a little harder to get the glue stick to hold this well right on the ends. Make sure that that's just how I want it. And once you're ready to top stitch, I'm gonna sew from the right side of the jacket and sew around all four sides of the bottom band. After the bottom band is sewn on a top stitch, we're gonna finish up the sleeves. I did knit sleeves, so they're just finished with a simple cuff. I've already sewn those on. If you're doing woven sleeves, there's more details in the pattern, but they're pretty much finished the exact same way as the bottom band. So if you have questions about the construction, you can just rewatch that part of the tutorial. And then on the bottom band, we also have the option of these little button tabs. I already got mine sewn together. You just sew them together, right sides together, turn them right side out, toss stitch around the end, pretty simple. So I went ahead and did that and I've added the buttonhole. 
then to add it to the bottom band, you're gonna lay it right side facing down. So whatever the good side of your buttonhole is, make sure you have that face down and pointed towards the center front. I've got the edge of the button tab, like a quarter inch past my side seam. And then I'm just gonna trim the seam allowance down a little bit. And then you'll press it and really, you don't want to use your fingers to really like press the seam down flat. I've even used like a rubber mallet before on these thick seams and it can really help flatten them out. So after you've pressed it flat, then you'll top stitch, which I've already done on this side. So we're gonna use like a barn door stitching pattern. So just a square with the X through it. And then you can add your little button to match. And we're gonna also go ahead and add the buttons to the front of the jacket. So if you included the front pockets, you can go ahead and get those buttons added now. We waited till the end so that they wouldn't be in the way while we're sewing. You wanna do your buttonholes first. So the first button, you're gonna to wanna to put about three quarter inches below the neckline. You can adjust that some depending on your preference. And then the bottom buttonhole should be centered on the band. And then just check the pattern to see how many buttons you need for your size and evenly, evenly space the rest down the jacket. These ones are about three and a half inches apart. And this is a size five. So these are the buttons I'm using. Pretty standard jeans buttons. Took three packages of them to have enough for this jacket since I added ones up here for the chest pockets plus the button tabs. So these are actually really easy to add, but once you've put them in, you cannot get them back out. So make sure you know what you're doing because there is no removing these. So they've got just this little like tack and you can just push these in with your finger. You don't need a hammer or anything. Some of those like heavy duty snaps take a hammer, but these just push right in. So I'm gonna use a pen to mark my placement. I'm just gonna, I've got my placket overlapped and I'm just gonna mark through my buttonhole. I already sliced my buttonhole open. I'm gonna mark a little dot. I'm gonna make sure that's in the center. Don't mind this bit of pink. It's from my marking pen. I still need to wash it off. So I'm gonna push the tack through from the back side. And then after you do that, before you get this put on, double check it. So line this up. Make sure your seam here is still lined up. This looks good. So I'm gonna go ahead and add the button. Just make sure it's straight and it'll just press and it's not hard at all. I can promise I do not have very strong fingers and that is not a difficult one to get pushed in. So there's, there's your button. So you'll just go ahead and do that all down the front of the jacket. Um, if you did functional pockets here, which I did, the button goes through the pocket facing and the front of the jacket, but you know, make sure you don't put the button all the way through or the pocket won't open. If you did the faux pocket, the button will go all the way through the front piece. So just finish up your sleeve cuffs, add your buttons, and this project is all done. Great job. Thank you for sewing with me. You can find this pattern at peekaboopatternshop.com.